Alright, so alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh guys. Now, today we're going to be talking about some very important things. Now, I'm joined by a very important guest. Um, if you watched the other video that we put forward, you would have known who it is. It's Faraz Zahabi, who is uh, arguably one of, if not the most uh, celebrated uh, MMA coaches in all of uh, UFC um, and all of the world, really, according to some uh, people. Including Joe Rogan, we talked about this in the, in, the, in, the previous, in the previous video. So what we're going to do in this, in, this, um, in this episode here is just talk generally about, I mean, not everyone, everyone wants to, to live a life where they're kind of going to work and coming back in these things and having good, I don't know, treats like this. I don't know what this is. Maybe, maybe that's... This, uh, baklava. this is your training video? It's not, <laughs> it's not that. Step one. <laughs> It's not um, it's not what you yeah. can have fun. Yeah. Okay, so look, it's not going to be a depressing video, guys. Okay, we're going to show you that even right, someone who's engaged in sports on a daily basis, trains the athlete, has a bit of fun sometimes. How should we eat? Well, I'll tell you. I believe that with the knowledge we have today scientifically, the advancements. Everybody should be within a healthy body weight. Because we know the benefits of it. What, what, what would you define as a healthy body weight? A young male should be between 9 and 15% body fat. Okay. Roughly, roughly speaking. Now there are, there are going to be some anomalies. But that's somebody in very good shape. But why shouldn't you be in good shape? We have so much science behind fitness. Now we know we can get in shape in 5 to 10 minutes a day. Who doesn't have five to ten minutes a day to keep their body, their most prized machine, healthy? You have time to fix your car and clean up your room, but you don't have time to keep your body healthy? It, you have to prioritize. Now, now, what kind of tips would you give? Like, if it's not, Now someone wants to start eating healthy, they want to start taking care of themselves. So what are like, the rules of thumb? If I can boil it down in three, I like to keep things simple. Three rules. I find it's the easiest way to learn. Learn three things at a time on okay. any subject. One would be know how many calories you can eat in a day. Okay. You can go on many websites, you find out how much your body, through your size, your age, your weight, your, 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 your goal for your weight, how many calories should you eat in a day? There's many programs. And then practice calculating your calories. After a while, you'll just look at a, at a piece of food and you'll know about how many calories. Now, you don't have to be perfectly exact, but over time, after about a month and a half, you'll be an expert. You'll be an expert. This is this how many calories, this is that many calories, this is, you know, I'm close to my, my quota for the day. Know how many calories you should have in a day. Yeah. Okay. You'll know that having that cookie is going to cost me this many calories, I'm not going to do it. Mm. Once you get to your goal, mm. let's say you get to 8% body fat, 9% body fat, whatever it is. Now you can have more off days, more days of splurging. Like, I eat this today, I'm not worried. I'm, like, I'm going to stay my body, my body fat. I'm not gonna. You cannot gain more than one pa one pound, one pound and a half of fat in a week if you binge all week. You can gain water weight. Yes. So you have to know that your your goal. Once you get there, it's easier to maintain than to get there. So I found it very encouraging. So how many calories do you eat a day? Figure that out. You're gonna have to experiment. If you're a little bit lightheaded, that number is a little bit low. You have to tweak it. If you're not losing a lot of weight after two, three weeks of doing it, it might be a little high. You gotta lower it. It's not an exact science. There is some adjusting that needs to be done. But the good news is it's very simple. If you're feeling bad, increase a small amount. Increase your calories by five or 10%. And now once you find that number, you'll find yourself full just eating that amount every day. Five minutes before one, bring the <coughs> Second, I would say a, a good rule of thumb would be to uh, to eat the same foods every day. Like I have, I know I have meals I make that are 300 calories. I know. Give us an example of your meal. I do. Uh, I do a, one meal that I do almost every day is one banana, two eggs. I mash them up. I make a pancake. I make three pancakes. With is that how you make a pancake? Yeah. Three, mash them up. I make a pancake, and I add 50 calories worth of uh, honey. I love honey. So I'm eating things I love. Pancakes. Sunda food. Yeah, of course. Sunda, sunda. Of course. I know that's 290 calories. Mm. I have dates, they're 75 calories each. I know how many right away. So food. Food. Dates is amazing for training, the best. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Sugar, fiber, carbohydrate, <laughs> slow releasing, easy to digest, and it's the perfect food. I always buy a meal. I had a feeling that will happen. 
I have uh, certain smoothies I make. I know they're 300 calories. I, I know my blocks of calories. Yeah. And I'll, if, I'm, if I'm in the mood to eat a hamburger, I know that a Big Mac is 560 calories. I can fit it in my day. I don't feel I'm deprived. Now, I don't always eat junk. I eat salads and fruits and vegetables, natural foods. But I know how many calories I should eat in a day. And for me, it keeps me lean, healthy, and it keeps the energy going. Because if you eat too many calories in a day, you'll feel lethargic. If you eat too little, you'll feel lightheaded and weak. How do you how do you keep that? Because that's one thing that I struggle with. I, I, every day I feel tired. Like, how do I change that? Know the right amount of calories. Yeah. Eat the healthiest food possible. The most nutrient dense. Yeah. And three, I would say, you know, you have to have a cheat meal here and there. Never let your cravings get out of control. If you're not at your target weight, have one or two cheat meals a week. Meals, not days, cheat yeah. days. One or two cheat meals. What would you define what's as a cheat meal? A burger, fries, okay. and a dessert. See, now you get <laughs> come, come to uh, Efe's Turkish restaurant and have a nice meal. Yeah. yeah. Don't go overboard, but have a nice meal. Don't let your don't let your cravings get out of control. You know, when I see something I want to eat, I say, eat. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I see something I want to eat, I'm like, okay, Saturday is my cheat meal. I'm having that. Mm. So I look forward to it. The motivation is very important, you know. And uh, you know, I, every year, every year on my birthday, I have to be nine percent body fat. I do my diet. I do my. I make sure that every year, so my my body doesn't age. Without me knowing, I, I keep it under control. I'm 38 years old. I train every day, all day long. Before you're 41. <laughs> yeah, like next practice. Next practice. Oh, Let's see who's older. You know, one of my students one time, wrestling, wrestling like, coach, you're getting old. I said, it's been 10 years. You haven't taken me down once. Take me down once and then say, your coach, you're getting old. Because I haven't taken you down in 10 years, and today I took you down. Still, he hasn't taken me down. So he goes, are you getting old? How old are you now? Yeah, Latif, you haven't got one take down. The rest of the 10 years, I'm still waiting for you to take me down. You can age well, well. He's, 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 This guy's been persistent. The 10 years trying, trying with him to take him down. Yeah, well, he's, he's got the persistence. The thing is, with our technology we have today, the modern knowledge we have today, yeah. Allah, aging is something that's, that's, that could be done very well. We have so much knowledge today. Health. Health comes from eating right and exercise. What do you think about meat? Because that was like the whole thing of meat. Um, I have a, I would say, I like a, a Dr. Uh, uh, Joel Furman. He says two deck of cards a week. So about a deck of cards worth. Of red meat or normal meat or what? Red meat twice a week, not more than that. I think that's the ultimate. The, the, sorry, the optimal. I haven't, I mean, I, I go over that. You know, we have such great food all the time. We're traveling. But it's the optimal. When I do that, I feel my best. Well, like, when I'm losing weight, I try to lower my red meat. I try to eat more fruits and vegetables. And you feel amazing. Yeah. But then again, you go to these great restaurants, I don't want to deny myself. So, you know, but next week, nah, you know, on this trip, I eat a little too much. Next week, I'm going to be more strict. Yeah. Me, I, at the weight I am now, I do four or five days of the right amount of calories. I lose weight right away. But I also train a lot. You know, it has to be reflective of how active you are. When you do these these websites and you go on these farms, they're gonna ask you how active is your lifestyle? Very yeah. moderate. Oh, you train every day. Like I train every day. Yeah. I do train a lot. Do you, do you have one day rest? A uh, one day rest on Sunday. Yeah. Incredible. I think about one day a week off. And is, there, is okay. Let's let's move on to the training now. <laughs> since since, since you about training, your training is mostly. What, what what's your training like? You know what, me, I, I can't run on a treadmill. I can't lift weight, it's too boring. I've been training a long time. For me, training is a play, it's a game. And it's, you, you train GSP as well? Yeah, George St. Pierre, of course, many, and many other great fights. Yeah. I do jiu-jitsu, wrestling, kickboxing, boxing. These things, if you tell me we're gonna wrestle for one hour, to me, one hour is nothing, wrestling. You tell me run on a treadmill for an hour, after 10 minutes, I'm not tired, I'm bored. Like all your fighters, oh, yeah, I'm bored. Do, do they have the same kind of philosophy that they don't run and they don't No, if you're, if you're competing, you're gonna have the motivation to go run. Because training is 99% motivation. Or like, yeah. You know, one thing I, I tell my wife, I tell her, if I don't make the 9% on my birthday, I'll give you 5,000 as a gift. Wow. Well, I'm feet. not gonna let, listen. <laughs> the chances of missing are gonna be less than 1%. You know what I mean? I'm never gonna, you know? But she'll try to tempt me with We make it fun. <laughs> she'll try to tempt me with cakes. Uh, oh, honey, I have this. And, but you need motivation. Wallahi, this is true. When it comes to training, yeah. motivation is important. Like me, my sons, I train my sons. Yeah. I tell my sons, if you train, I'll give you anything you want. What do you want? This toy, that toy? Yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. But train every day. Do your schoolwork every day. The answer is yes. We save our money and we buy it. That's what you want? 
no problem. Mm. You want to eat McDonald's? No problem. Mm. One time I was eating uh, three, four Big Macs. My son looked at me and said, Papa, how come you're not fat? I said, son, I train every single day. Or do they have halal in Canada? No, no, no. <laughs> I eat a lot, I eat a lot. No, if I have that opinion, you know, the, 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 no, there are some opinions that say it's right. Yeah, I know, I've heard of that actually, yeah, I've heard. But you know, I, I didn't grow up eating halal, to be honest with you, so we never, we were always used to eating whatever. It was uh, not very common halal. Yeah. And, uh, what, even now? You kind of do no, that? I, I, I don't know, I'm sure it is, but you'd have to go out of your way. You know, it's, not, it's not as common as here. Here, I saw Kentucky halal. Is it? Yeah, it's it's like, it's it's most places. Places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Subway's halal. Yeah, yeah, most places. Oh, the Muslim pan. So most of the big companies. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, good. It's, it's convenient. Mm. But anyways, I go stop myself. I train every day. It's like it's not a question whether I'm going to train or not. It's not a question. It's a habit. And what, what's your training like? How many hours do you train? I don't know. How many hours do we train today? Um, That's my day every day. Two and a half. That's my day every day, twice a day. Do you, do, do, you do the sparring yeah, every day as well? Yeah, of course. Of course. You see my video? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. spar too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spar. Mm -hmm. Today I didn't train much. I have an injured rib. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. Mm. Here's my philosophy on training. Yeah. Yeah. There's no excuse. Okay. No excuse. Can you do one push up a day? I'll tell you the biggest secret to training. Yeah. Never train 100%. Train mm. always 70%. To 80 percent. Okay. Save some for tomorrow. So if somebody's completely out of shape, let's say the guy he hasn't trained in 10 years, I tell him, okay, tomorrow do one push-up. Okay. Just one. Me. Don't tell me you don't have the time. Now, if you tell me you don't have the time, halas, I don't believe you. You're not. You're not serious about being healthy. Okay. okay. You have given up. Mm -hmm. I call that defeatism. Yes. You've given up. That's true. I, I agree. Can you do one push-up? Don't give me ex one push-up. That one push-up. It's going to turn to two. Two is going to be enjoyable at one point. Actually, you're going to crave number three. And then after that, number three is going to turn to a five. Because three is uncomfortable. It's not, it's not as satisfying as doing five. It's going to grow. And you've created a spark, a habit. For me now, I'm at the point where I train three hours. And for me, it's a regular day. Maybe somebody trained three hours. Wow, that was exhausting. For me, it's just a regular day. I got to that point. But it's one step at a time one quick. so me when I train someone I hold their hand until they're too strong and they're carrying me you know what I mean you could take them step by step my sons I started with a little bit of training a little bit a little bit and then a little more a little more and then training is now mandatory if you want the things you like homework and training is mandatory before it was just a game and now Baba I want this okay no problem we save our money for it but if you have good discipline, I give you everything. If you, I think the worst thing you could do to a child is give them without their, them earning. The worst. I'm a very serious father. I read a lot of books on, on raising children. And especially I have a, you know, a background in philosophy. I have philosophized a lot about raising children. And children need to develop their competence. The more competence they have, the more confidence I want to ask you a question on that actually. And not yeah. just on children, but just on young people growing up. Because obviously, like, not just Muslims, but a lot of people in the West now have this, have this self insecurity. Yeah. And do you know what? Participation and, oh, trophy. Yeah. And so on. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you, like, what do you. I think this is one thing that, I've, out of all people, you're the best person to ask, probably, that I've asked. Um, it's a quality that people don't talk about now. Yeah. Bravery. You do fighting, I and mean, then you train a lot of fighters. You've seen a lot. What's the best way to build bravery? I would say developing competence. The more competence you have, the more the byproduct is confidence. You understand? Yeah. So the more I prepared, I always tell people this: you know, if your competence is here, your confidence should be here. If your competence is here and your confidence is here. The real world, the world is going to shut you down. If your competence is here, and your confidence is here, you won't live up to your potential. So what we need is to be realistic. If you drive your car every day to work safely, you should assume that tomorrow you'll drive your car to work safely. 
if you're getting into an accident every two days, I'm gonna tell you, Muhammad, don't take the car today. <laughs> yeah. I'm not confident you can drive. So this is why I like, I like, I like to coin the, the term that I, I heard Kelly Stark say. He said, test, measure, retest. And build your confidence accordingly. This I think is sensible. So kids, young kids, the reason why they lack confidence is because, you know, I hate to bring philosophy in all the time. You ever heard of Nietzsche's last man? Nietzsche says, look, yeah. the last man. Yeah, I remember his um, Ubermensch. Yes, the opposite of the last man. Yeah, it's the opposite, yeah. He says, look, society is cre creating. So Socrates talked about this as well. Okay, look, think about it. You have pioneers, people who, who you have nothing. When you have nothing, you fight, you claw your way to the top. Yeah. And then you have something. And your son, he saw you work hard. You're the first generation of workers. You came to the land and you toiled the land and you farmed and you, you built. And your son, he saw. But your son's life is better than yours. Why? Because now I have things to give you. Where I had nothing. And tomorrow when I die, you have inheritance. So you started higher than me. I boosted you up. And then your son is going to see you. You didn't work as hard, but you had so much. And the third child is even richer. And he got just got. He didn't work. He just got. And, okay, it takes more than three generations, so to speak. But there's a generation they are spoiled. That's what Nietzsche said. Look, society is making us more and more spoiled because the hand-me-downs are coming. And then one day you're a fat cat on a silk pillow. But the world out there is too hard for you. So you have this deep insecurity. You can't go out there in the world and get a kill and bring it back home for us to eat. You've, the comforts of the world, and I can give you many examples throughout history, many. The, the, the comforts of the world have become a prison to you. So now when you, when you meet, as I, tell you, I tell my kids, my yeah. wife, I, want, I never want to be soft. To be the guy who just tells people what to do, but I can't do it too. Mm. I fear one day I'm going to become old. Mm. And I have to become sidelined. Mm. But then I'm going to feel softer. I feel like I, I, you know, I don't want to be the guy on the pillow, the soft pillow, so to speak. Okay. People think being born in abundance and, and, and money is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blessing. It can be. It can also be a curse to have everything. <clears throat> so, I mean, there, there's so much to know about raising a, a healthy human being. So you're saying bravery is contingent on... Sorry. Confidence. Yeah. So get confidence. True bravery. Because the thing is, people can act confident, but they're masking a layer of insecurity. And this is common the case. quite common the case. Yes. Bluff. Yes. Bluff. So yeah, I, I believe in raising competences. If you want to make somebody healthy and happy, raise their competence. Imagine, let me do a thought experiment. Imagine you could survive in the wild right now. Perfectly comfortable. Tomorrow if the government froze your bank account, kicked you out of the home, threw you out in the street, kicked you out of the you wouldn't even sweat one beat. Why? I remember a, a story about a burglar, what, the greatest burglar of all time, okay? the greatest burglar of all time. Hen I, I believe his name was, if I remember correctly, Henry Manchester. I was a young kid when I heard his story. I, I watched a documentary on it. I couldn't believe the confidence this man had. 14 years he's robbing banks and, and stores and everybody, he's robbing everybody. They call him the rooftop burglar. He would make a hole in the rooftop, read the manual of the alarm, dis disable the alarm. Untouchable, this guy. One day they caught him. And he confessed to all the crimes. They're like, you confessed to all the crimes? Like, yeah, I did all those burglaries. He wanted to be famous. <laughs> when they put him in jail, he was so smart, he got out of the jail. Like, he was so confident. Because why? He had extreme... He was a genius. Wallah, he was a genius. At the end, he ended up getting caught because he fell in love with a girl. The girl called, him, called the cops on him. <laughs> he wasn't emotionally. He had high IQ, but not EQ. EQ <laughs> is no good EQ. <laughs> yeah. Emotional intelligence, zero. IQ, huge. But you see, he had so, I remember watching that documentary. His confidence was incredible. Yeah. But they can't even hold him in the prison. He's too smart. You understand? So this, this confidence comes from legitimate developing your skills. That's why I tell, you know, I always tell my students. I've raised thousands of young men. I always encourage them to exploit their potential. God gave you a potential to learn, to think, to study, to increase your skills. Exploit it. It's a gift. That's what the Prophet said. Tan Muhammad said, Qabla Khams. He said, no. uh, you know, take five before five. And what is that? I wanted it to like... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is basically a war, a war booty. Let me take In other words, yeah. take 
like the treasures of five things before five things come. So it's like one of the things he said is um, health before illness comes, youth before old age comes. These are some of the five things. Quite simple. Guys, I mean, um, thank you. First of all, for us, thank you very much for like that. It was excellent. I think a lot of people will take a lot of benefit from that. Because I think this is an aspect that people sometimes forget, right? And, and people sometimes forget that being physical, being emotionally intact and mature is also a very important part of being a human being and functioning in, the, in life. So thanks for that, it was really good advice. Now obviously for us it's not a YouTube channel where you do your like tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, it's called TriStar, it's called TriStar Gym, which is a gym where obviously some of the great, greatest fighters really have uh, trained and have all these videos on there. So anyone who wants to uh, to go on there and to watch those videos, those videos are very, very beneficial. And you have talks as well, you talk about nutrition, you talk about these kind of things, kind of similar discussions as we've had today. So that's also on there. And um, thanks for listening, guys. in this lecture, there's never been a golden age in science greater than the golden age of Islam. During the golden age of Islam was the golden age of science. There's never been a greater golden age before or after. He says it in his speech. He even admits it. Who says that? What's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson. And what does he say? In he says book? it in one of his lectures. I'll ah. send it to you. He's very open about it. He, yeah. he says, look, the stars are Arabic names. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because the Arabs were great astronomers and they pushed science to the, to the greatest degree. But when the Mongolians came and burned our libraries and, and crushed the Muslim Empire, the blowback was, hey, we have to go make it right with Allah. We were too much in the dunya. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this. This, this is what I've understood yeah. from the lectures I've listened to, yeah. from the, the evidence I've been, I've, I've been trying to accumulate. What happened to the golden age yeah. is that the blowback was, look, we got so much fascinated about the dunya and studying the dunya, we forgot about the deen. Yeah. So they, Imam Ghazali was trying to tell them, look, come back to the deen. Like, you know, go back to this is our this is our 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 our, uh, our, our this is how they interpret it. This was because don't forget, this is obviously it was it wasn't uh, Genghis Khan, it was Hulagu, his grandson. But supposedly, according to Yasser Qadi, he says, look, when Genghis Khan came to the mosque, I can't remember which one, but it was a prominent mosque, a famous mosque. He says, look, I'm, left, left I'm your Qadr Allah. I'm can, your yeah. sins. I'm here because for, for your punishment of your sins, so to speak. He understood the deen, right? No man yeah. can do anything to you if Allah doesn't allow him. So he's telling him, look, Allah is allowing you to do this to you because of your sins. So in Imam Ghazali's time, from what I understand, because Imam Ghazali, from what I understand, was very pro-philosophy and pro-learning and pro-science, etc. Mm -hmm. However, he was also trying to bring them back to spirituality. Yeah. Left there. And this may be the case, but it's time for a recovery. You know, yeah. it's time for us to start being more open I mean, we are, I mean, you know, people, you know, Muslims go to school, etc. But it doesn't mean because you're religious, you can't be scientific. It doesn't mean because you're scientific, you can't learn about the deen. They're not exclusive. It shouldn't be. That's right.